I'm Charlie Reimer, and this is the Charlie Reimer Golf Show, powered by PlayGolfMyrtleBeach.com. So uh, I'm thrilled now to be joined by uh, World Golf Hall of Fame member, 48-time LPGA winner, and uh, more important than that, my friend, Nancy Lopez. Nancy, thank you for coming on uh, today. Uh, wh where are you and your husband, Ed? Where are you all holed up during this whole quarantine situation? <laughs> Hi, Charlie. We're in Palm City, Florida, and uh, fortunately, we're still able to play some golf. Um, I belong to, We belong to Piper's Landing, and... So it's, it's great to be able to still play some golf. Um, it, it was funny because when this all started, I had trigger finger in both of my thumbs. Mm -hmm. And I decided, well, I'm going to go ahead and get that surgery done because it really hurt. Um, and then I said, you know, just that way when I, I get to start working and traveling again, I can do that. Well, now I, I do my surgery on both my thumbs. I can't play golf for five, four to five weeks. <laughs> Oh no! So I'm like, that was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, because now I had dead time; I had nothing to do, and it was it was pretty crazy. Yeah, I'm I'm sure. Um, th this situation, and one of the main reasons I I wanted to to talk with you, um, is, is very frustrating for a lot of people. And and um, you you are one of the most positive people that I know. Even talking about not being able to get out and play golf, you, you're you're smiling about, it, you're laughing about it, and that's contagious. Where, where where did you get this unbelievable outlook that you have as as being literally one of the most positive people I've ever been around in my life? Well, you know, my dad was very positive. He um he just lived his life that way. Um, when he he owned an auto body repair shop. And I would work there in the summertime answering his phone at a young age, uh, answering his phone, which is East Second Body Shop, which is my dad's, the name of his shop. And, you know, the way he was with people and, you know, he painted their cars, fixed dents. If they didn't like it, he said, I'll do it again. And he was always uh, positive in that respect, too. But um, as I started playing golf, he watched me grow up and he saw the negatives that were, you know, getting mad as a young person and wanting to do better. He always had an anecdote for something. And he was this cute little guy, Hispanic man, strong Spanish accent. I mean, and for example, um, he would say to me when he would see me again, I, I was not a club thrower or I, at least he wouldn't have let me be one. And I remember slamming my club on the ground one day and he came at me with his golf club because we were walking. We didn't ride carts back then. And he shook, shook that club in my face. He said, if you ever do that again, I'm going to hit you with this golf club. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never did it again. And he was just positive. He saw when I would get a little mad that I didn't play better. And, you know, for example, one day he looked at me. He said, Nancy, you want to shoot 39 or you want to shoot 40? I said, well, Dad, I want to shoot 39. Even though it was just one shot, he said, well, when you get mad, you shoot 40. And I was like, wow, that makes sense. <laughs> mm. So things like that he would say to me. Um, and he was such a great mentor, golf dad, everything. Because I remember playing in the U.S. Open in Philadelphia. And that golf course kicked my butt. I mean, I just didn't play well. I was still an amateur. And very disappointed because after Friday's round, I was probably 12 over par, knew I was going to miss the cut and walked off the green. My dad was there with me and I had tears in my eyes and I walked up to my dad and I, I was crying. I said, dad, I'm so, so sorry. I didn't play better. And he hugged me and he said, he said, it's okay, honey. I didn't want to see you at 25 over par anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the way he always, he, and I went from crying to laughing because I thought it was the cutest thing. And 
you know, as a young person, your parents are your best friends, even if they aggravate you and tell you things and have rules that you don't like. But they're really your best friend, and you always look to them to give you positive acknowledgement of anything that you do. And my dad and my mom were always like that. Well, if there was a Hall of Fame for professional athletes, um, and, and the criteria was how they treat their fellow professionals, how they're respected by their fellow professionals, how they deal with fans, I, I think you and Arnold Palmer would be the first two, the top of the class, to go in to that, that type of Hall of Fame. What kind of lessons did you learn from your dad and how to deal with people? Well, like I said, just watching him in his auto body repair shop, he was always friendly to people. He had um, These people always came back because my dad treated them with respect and always, you know, the, the customer was always right. Um, and I think with that, I, my dad was like that in our family life. He was just always positive. He, I remember him saying to me that, there's a lot of negative in the world, but there's always something positive you can make out of a negative. And you really can. If you really think about it, instead of being negative, um, I mean, I see people say things that are negative, and their whole life becomes negative. Um, and I, I remember, and I don't know how much time we have, but I have a story to tell. Please. Uh, we, we've got all the way till mid-July <laughs> before we have anything else to do around here. <laughs> well, I had... Um, golf schools at the villages florida for many years and um we'd have about 30 students for three days and you know i, I felt like i always sensed people you know there were people coming in there were husband and wives there were you know women gentlemen just everybody was coming to my golf school i guess it was a three-day event i'm watching people come in and i'm observing them their body english you know how they walk if they were going to be confident and i saw this husband and wife they're walking towards me and she was this happy, happy wife. You just saw she was happy all the time. And then here's her husband. He was kind of slouched over, looking down. Maybe he didn't want to be there. Maybe I intimidated him. I'm not really sure. But as they sat down, they sat right in the front row. And I, I thought to myself, he's going to be my victim for the next three days. <laughs> so... We're sitting there, and I decided we're going to play a game. I told them all. I said, I know you all don't know each other, but for the next three days, this is going to be a, neg a positive school, not a negative school. So if you hear anybody say anything negative, you know, the, it's hot, the greens are too slow, the, the rough is too high, um, I want you to look at that person and go, wah, wah. <laughs> well, everybody kind of, oh, that sounds like fun, that sounds like fun. And the wife was like, I love this. You could just see this look in her face because I think her husband was just a negative person. So we go, we split up, and we go to our, our different – I was in the chipping area first, so I was teaching 10 of those people. And he was one of the first ones I was teaching. So I give them all a tip on what to do when they're chipping. I watch him, and he's chipping, and he's chipping. He's getting frustrated. He said, I can't do this. And I said, wah, wah. And he looked, at, he looked at me like, you really did do that to me? <laughs> and I said, yes, you can do this. Let me show you again. You can do this. So he goes back to chipping. And, the, you know, the next three days you hear a lot of wah, wah, people laughing because they, caught, they realized how negative they were and the negative things that came out of their mouth on the golf course. So on the last day I play one hole with every group. I walk up to the tee, and the wife sees me, and she's so happy to see me. He sees me, and it's not as happy to see me as she was. So he hits his tee shot, and he swings, and he just hits it left. You know, rough in Florida is not very high, at least not, at, not in the villages it wasn't high. So he's, he swings, hits the ball left, drops his club, and I said, wah, wah. He said, I didn't, I didn't say anything. I said, that was – your body English was so negative. You dropped the club – I said, come up here on the tee. Do you see your ball? Yes. You can still hit it. And my dad always said, if you have a backswing, you have a chance. So let's go hit this next shot. So we get up to the second shot. He hits it right into the bunker. He goes, yes, I hit it in the bunker. And I'm like, no, that's not what I mean. <laughs> what I mean is when you get in the bunker, you have a backswing, you could knock it in the hole. Well, he wasn't really happy that I did that to him. So... 
that school ends. We have our cocktails. We say goodbye. Three months go by. Another school happens. Then six months go by. And here he and his wife come again. And they're walking towards me. And she's happy. And he's walking straight to me, making eye contact. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what's he going to say to me? And he looked at me. And he walked up to me. And he said, Nancy, I am playing the best golf I've ever played in my life. And I think he just changed. I think his wife probably wow at him to death at home. Mm. And he realized how negative he was. Mm. That's a great lesson you delivered to him, no <laughs> doubt about it. And I hope a lot of folks <laughs> learn from uh, hearing that uh, firsthand today from you. Um, st- staying on the no complaining, uh, happy theme on the golf course. Last time I was with you, uh, we were at the Villages for your charity event. And we're going to get into that in a little bit. But uh, you, you handed me a tea. And it was one of the T's is really big on the top. And until I turned 50, I didn't realize what that was for. It's a little easier to tee it up when it's a little bigger. But but as I recall, uh, on, on the crown of that T and, and big print, it says, play happy. Isn't that mm-hmm. what it, that T says? Yeah. And, that, and that's sort of. martini tea, and it yeah. says, play happy. And that's a, that's a mantra for you, though, isn't it? Yes, I, I know you yes, hand those, those out to a lot of people. <laughs> it is. With my company, Nancy Lopez Golf Adventures, That is our mantra, and we teach my dad's lessons that he taught me, and many years ago, my dad looked at me, he says, Nancy, say, you play better when you play happy, and, you know, people, I'm not saying that every time you hit a bad shot, you're going to go, I'm going to be happy, it's about attitude, you know, if you miss a shot, if you go to the next shot with an attitude that you're going to hit it better, instead of dragging the bad feeling from the last shot or the last putt you missed, I guarantee you're going to hit that shot better. Mm -hmm. Maybe not perfect, but you're going to hit it better than if you carry yourself with your shoulders down, you know, hitting your club all the way to the golf shot, instead of shoulders back, walking to it and say, boy, I can't wait to hit this. I have a backswing. I can still hit this ball in the hole because you never know. Mm. Golf is that kind of game. I wish so, I wish I'd had this conversation with you when I was a rookie on the PGA Tour because if I could get in a time machine and and go back in time, what what you just explained to me uh, is something I would have liked to have known and believed when I was 22, 23 years old. Because I spent a lot of time playing golf and PGA Tour events, beating myself up, and that just doesn't help at all. And and it's surprising yeah. how many young, talented people. That, that play this game at the highest levels, that just have a horrible attitude. They're unhappy because of it. Yeah, it's it's you can't let golf control you that way. I mean, it's it's a game that you should, you know, I always think about, what I thought about most of all, because we're going to talk about my, my charity, Aim for the Handicap. This is our 40th year that I've been doing the tournament. And I remember days, I think about all those handicapped children that some can't talk, some can't think, some can't even sit up straight, some can't walk. And I remember being on the golf course, and and when I was having a bad day, I'd say, you know, I'm so lucky to be able to walk, swing a golf club, enjoy this beautiful golf course. I think every golf course is beautiful. And yet those little kids can't do any of that. So why am I letting this crazy game of golf Mm. do this to me? And I think there were days when I did that, and I realized, you know, from what my dad taught me too, that I need to enjoy the walk is what I always always say on the golf course as a professional. Once I got inside the ropes, that was my other life. Outside the ropes was my, my personal life, but inside the ropes was my professional life. And I just needed to play the game, enjoy it. And if I wasn't going to enjoy it, I needed to probably go home and hang up my golf clubs. Mm-hmm. Because you're not going to hit every shot perfect. You're not going to make every putt but it's the attitude that you take or the play happy attitude that you take to the next shot that's going to take two or three shots off your golf game instead mm. of adding two or three shots to your golf game. Well, it's amazing uh, when we look at what golf has been able to do for charity and what our heroes have been able to do in, in sort of defining what success is. Mr. Palmer with the Arnold Palmer Children's Hospital, Mr. Nicholas with with uh, the uh, Nicholas uh, Children's Healthcare Foundation, what you've been able to do with AIM, you just mentioned you you've had and your commitments aren't short term. Uh, you you you've helped out with a hospice event in Albany, Georgia, your longtime home for, gosh, it's got to be thirty or forty plus years. You mentioned AIM, 
And, and when our heroes like you guys do that, it, it shows the rest of us, hey, there, there's more than just going out and playing this game and making money. You're in position to help people. Yeah. You got to do that. Thank you for showing us, Nancy, what success looks like. <laughs> well, thanks, Charlie. It's, you know, it's just fun to, you know, I've, I've been blessed. Um, you know, God gave me talent. Um, my dad helped me with that talent. Um, I worked hard. Um, you know, it opened a lot of doors for me. I have so many friends in golf um, and just love it. And to be able to give back, which, you know, not all athletes do that, which I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. um, they're all role models, and some don't want to accept that responsibility. But there are little kids out there that look at you and look up to you um, and want to, you know, be like you. And so you've got to show them something positive. And it's a good thing to do that. You know, I have a story. I think why my life became what it became on the LPGA Tour is because of this one PGA professional. And I've never told anybody who he was. I was 15 years old, and my dad took me to the Glen Campbell LA Open out in Los Angeles um, for my 15th birthday. My grandmother lived out there, and um, there was one PGA professional that was my idol. I loved him, never met him, and I wanted to get his autograph really badly. And so I'm standing with a group of people outside the club knowing he was going to come out. There are probably about 30 people waiting. I was about the third person behind the first person that was going to encounter him when he walked out. And so he walks out, and that guy says to him, Mr. So-and-so, can I have your autograph? And he, he looked around, and he, and he says, I don't have time for this. And, oh, my gosh, I was this little 15-year-old that just worshipped him. And when he said that to me, I felt so bad for the first man that asked him that. He had to have shrunk to two inches tall because it, mm. it was devastating for me not and him not even directly telling me that. And I think from, from that moment on as a 15-year-old who was playing golf and maybe had aspirations at that time to, to play professional golf, but I, you know, was kinda, I was kind of young then. I was just enjoying playing amateur golf. I said to myself, I said, if I ever turn professional, I will never do that to someone. And realizing that an autograph is really special to somebody. I mean, it was really special to me, and I didn't get it, and how disappointed I was. So I think that's why I've always signed all the autographs. Um, I try and sign every one of them. If I can, I usually come back. And I just, I, you know, I just realized how important it was to those people. And if they wanted my autograph, then I needed to give it to them. Hmm. Well, Nancy, thanks for sharing your unbelievable attitude, all the great vibes. Um, it's exactly what the doctor is ordering right now. It's what we all need, some great attitude. Will you stick with us a little bit longer and we'll get into yeah. uh, your playing career when we return? Sure. Perfect. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks for joining us. I'm Charlie Reimer. We'll see you next time on the Charlie Reimer Golf Show, powered by PlayGolfMyrtleBeach.com.